Welcome back to my channel guys. I know I've not recorded a video in a long time. I had exams this month. Things have been hectic, etc. However, I felt it was very important for me to get this video out because a lot of people have been asking me this question. A lot of people have been messaging me, DM, Insta, da -da 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 Boom. I'm here. I'm back. And I've got the video you want. How to get closer to God in 2019. Fam. At first I was thinking to myself, I'm not really qualified to do this video. I'm not a preacher, I'm not a pastor, I'm not anything. I'm just a normal boy seeking God. But the Holy Spirit really told me, hey listen, go tell the peoples how to do this, man. How to do it. So I'm here today to tell you how to do it. So the reality of this is, when you think of God, try not to think of him as a far off distant figure. A thought of distant being try and think of, think of him as someone that wants to be close to you think of him as a person someone that wants to be intimate with you someone that wants to be personal someone that wants to have a special relationship with you and wants to walk with you in everyday life i think a lot of us we get this whole concept of god like you know he's in heaven he's far he can see everything but he's not he's you know there's a big god is everywhere god is with you do you understand god is next to you god loves you this is what a lot of people need to understand, that Jesus loves them. He died for you, fam. So he's close to you. He's everywhere. He's around. And he wants to be personal. He wants to have that holy intimacy with you. The Bible describes us as brides of Christ. He wants to be close. He wants to literally be married to you and be involved in all aspects of your life. I think that's one thing that we need to understand before I even start saying anything else. A lot of people see God as this angry figure that's just waiting to judge them and to destroy them. No, he loves you. Understand what it means to love. The Bible says that God is love. Do you understand? So his love is just forever around. It's here. Do you get? He's paid the cost for your sins. Jesus has died and he loves you so much. And I have to remind myself this all the time because the devil tries to make me think otherwise. Remember that Jesus loves you. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, God loves you. This is the first thing I want you to understand. He loves you and wants you to be close. I want you to be so close and to be like this with him. Have that special union. So, having said that, a couple steps of how to get close to God. I don't even need to go into this whole fact that, listen, I'm not perfect. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a priest. Da, da, da. I've said it already, fam. A lot of people think that when I come to talk about God, I'm coming on some holier than thou thing. I'm really not. If I've come across as judgmental, then that is my own doing. That's my own fault. But I need it to be... I need this to be transparent, you understand? I need to be transparent with you guys so that you understand what this walk is like, what it actually means to actually be a Christian and to try and be a Christian. So, in regards of how to come close to God, guys, the Bible says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh to you. So, saying that, come close to me and I'm going to come close to you. God has been out there with his arms stretched out for so long, waiting for us to just come and spend time with him and talk to him and let out our emotions all these things but we've 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 kind of made ourselves distance from him we've made ourselves distant with the things that go on in the world we live in 2019 social media and clout is the majority of most people's agenda that's all that really matters and we've kind of pushed god to the back of our minds <coughs> so it's important now that we come close to our first love to our maker and um and yeah so the first thing I would say in, in regards to getting close to God is to pray. <laughs> as I said, think of God as a person. How do you get close to someone without speaking to them? The Bible says pray without ceasing. So at the end of the day, if I was to, if I wanted to have a girl, if I wanted to make a, someone my girlfriend, that's to have a relationship with them, is it not? To be close. The main thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm always communicating. Do you get me? I'm telling you how I feel. And I'm hearing what she has to say as well. And it's the same thing with God. Praying is sometimes a very tedious thing because it feels like, who am I even talking to? But this is where faith comes in. You need to pray and you need to believe that God is hearing your prayers and God is answering your prayers. And I think I said it in my testimony video, guys, we, we have to go beyond our five minute, 10 minute of daily prayer. We have to take it to the next level. We have to do what we call quiet time quiet time with God so you're actually spending yes hours in his presence at the start of the day calling upon him confessing the confessing your sins 
telling him how much you love him, how much you appreciate him, how much you want him to be close to you, how much you need his Holy Spirit. Because Zechariah 4, 6, 4, 6 says, not by power, not by might, by, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So a lot of things we'll only be able to do by the Spirit of God. So we need to really up our prayer lives and we need to spend more time in the presence of God. We need to ensure that we are actually spending time with him. Not that we're rushing the prayer so that we can go and do other things. Not that our minds are elsewhere because it's very easy for, especially for me, for my mind to be going to other places when really and truly I just need to be focusing on God. And this all comes through faith. So the main and the first important thing to do is to do your quiet time. Now, your quiet time is not just about praying. Because imagine this. Imagine you're in a relationship with someone and all they do is talk. <laughs> all they do is talk and they don't even listen to what you have to say. They're not even taking in anything you have to say. They're not listening. What they're doing is just talking, talking, talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eventually, you're going to say, ah, ah, what is it? It's okay. Do you understand? So, when you're praying and when you're doing your quiet time, make sure that you are actually opening your Bible and you're getting into the Word of God. Because the Bible says, in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was God. Do you get me? So, the Word that you're reading is God and it's His way of talking to you. It's His way of telling you what He wants you to know. So, when you're going into your Bible in your quiet time, you say, Lord, look, send your Holy Spirit down on me so that I can have revelation, I can have understanding, I can have discernment, I can know what these things are saying, I can know what you mean. Because I'm not going to lie, sometimes I read the Bible but I'm like, bruh, what are you telling me right now? <laughs> I don't get it. So you need to really, really pray for that discernment and understanding so you know, rah, this is what God is trying to tell me. This is what he's trying to communicate to me. This is how I can become in tune and actually hear his voice. Because trust me, God has so much things that he wants to say to us. He's One thing I've realized is that God is always talking. Jesus is always talking. But it's, are we in tune with what he's saying? Are we in tune with the word of God? So when you're doing your quiet time, yes, cry out to him, pray, tell him how you feel, be open with him. He's your father at the end of the day. He will, he already knows how you feel before you even come into your prayer room. So it's time for you to be honest with him, to be naked before the Lord. Not naked physically, naked as in spiritually. You're telling him everything. You're confessing to him from the heart. You're talking to him from the heart. God can see through any pretense, any deception, all these things. So it's really for us to be open and naked before the Lord and tell him how we truly, 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 truly feel. If you're angry at him, tell him you're angry. Tell him, hey, you vexed me, you know. Why weren't you supporting me with this? Why didn't you help? I was expecting you to... He understands. Do you get? He understands. Everyone, not everyone, but people can think that God is some angry guy. Yes, he can be angry. Ooh, I've seen him angry. Do you get? But... He, he loves you and he wants to know how you truly feel. Into the word, make sure that you're actually soaking in what is being said. So this is why I said you need to pray for the Holy Spirit to help you understand. But when you're now getting into it, you need to start asking yourself certain questions. How does this apply to my life? How does this apply to me and my generation? Do you understand? How does this apply to the things that I want to do? I'll give you an example. There's a period of time I was struggling with faith. So I didn't really believe that my prayers were being heard by God. And I was praying, I was praying, I was praying, and I was struggling to pray. And I said, you know what? Let me read the word of God. Let me hear what God has to say to me. I opened it to Acts. And I was reading the Acts of the Apostles. And I got to a point where I started to read where Herod put Peter in jail. Obviously, the disciple Peter. And it says that the, the church prayed without ceasing. And the Lord sent an angel to go and deliver him from jail. So this just goes to show that he does actually hear our prayers. We should have the faith. We should believe that he's listening to us and he can help you out in any situation. So guys, quiet time. Spend quiet time with God every single day. Force yourself. Force yourself to get out of bed. Force yourself to wake up early. Set an alarm. Set, set practical steps. Cool, I'm going to wake up at 7 so I can pray till 8, 9, 10. And then I can do what I need to do for the rest of the day. And trust me, you'll be blessed. Another thing I will say is do not feel like you are too sinful to be close to God. Fam, listen, come as you are. Come as you are and let him do the rest. I've, I, was born again, I, I was born again in May. Bruv, I'm still making mistakes that I made back in 015, fam. 014. It doesn't mean I'm disqualified. It doesn't mean God hates me. It just means I need it just means I need to spend more time in his presence. I need more of the Holy Spirit. I need more of the things of God around me to help me grow and to help me stop doing certain things. Moses was a murderer. Moses. 
was a murderer. Are you deep in that? As in, he saw one of his brothers getting tr troubled by the other side, ran up on them, dipped down on the mains. So, if Moses, who was a murderer, can be a friend of God, we too can be friends of God. I'm sure none of you have killed someone. Unless you have, then ah, just go and hand yourself into Metropolitan. <laughs> David as well. Slept with the next man's wife. Got her pregnant. Got her pregnant. Are you deep in it? There was no such thing as condoms them days. He just said, Rah. got her pregnant. Send the husband onto the battlefield so that he can go and die. You wanted the guy's wife. Are you deep in this? This is David. That was described as a man of being after God's own heart. I'm sure that you have not got another man's wife pregnant and sent him out to, for his death. So you too can be accepted by God. All you have to do is make the first step. Go and give your life. But this leads me on to my next point. How do you give your life to Christ? You have to find a church. You have to find a church that you're going to be solid in. You have to find a church where you can actually do things for God. You, can actually, you have to find a church where you are going to give your life to Christ. The Bible says, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So, what does it mean to be born again? It means to proclaim with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour, that you believe Him, you love Him, you believe He died for your sins, accept Him into your heart, and your spirit will be renewed and you are born again. Do you understand? So, find yourself a church, bruv. Find yourself a church. All oh, this one, oh, I heard this about this church, I heard this about this church. Fam, have you been? Have you been? Let's not just sit down and criticise everything we hear and see. Let's go and see what things are saying for ourselves. Do you understand? Let's go with open minds. Let's go with renewed minds. I go to First Love Church personally. I've heard so many things about the church. But if I had listened to everything that was said about the church before I went, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have any sort of relationship with God right now. Do you understand? So, always, 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 always make sure that you have a church. Because that's how you're going to really grow. The Bible says iron sharpens iron and do not neglect the fellowship of the saints. So if you're not around Christian people, you're not going to be able to be edified. Do you understand? You're going to be around people that are just doing the things that you want to leave behind. And trust me, even if you... if It's going to be hard. Me personally, I've realised that there's certain people that I have to drop out. There's certain friends that I actually have to leave behind and cut off and say, hey, bro, man's got love for you, you know. I was praying for you all the time, this, this, that. But I cannot chill with you on the level that we used to chill, fam. Because the things that you've got me doing is just taking me further and further away from where I want to be. Do you understand? So it's for us to now assess our surroundings. Use common sense and discernment and say to yourself, do I need to be here? Do I need to chill with my man? Do I need to know you? We have to ask ourselves these questions. Otherwise, Jane it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard because even you could be making progress and getting to know God more and more. But it's like your environment is constantly causing you to backslide. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good character. And that evil communication just comes from people you're around. Do you understand? Ugh, guys, I can go into so many scriptures. Psalm 1. Blessed is he that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There's so many different scriptures that are talking about friendships and environments, people that we have around us. So it's very important that people that are moving mad in your life or people that are not even helping you on your walk and getting closer to God, that you start to distance yourself from them because these are some of the practical steps you can take. I would also say, guys, it's very, 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 very important not to judge other people. And this is what we see a lot, judgment on others. This person done this, this person done this, this person done this. <clears throat> Christ says that for when you judge others, that same judgment will be used upon you. Do you understand? So it's like, why would you want to bring condemnation by your, upon yourself from the person you want to be close to? As a Christian, I've realized that, rah, just because I'm born again, just because I go to church, just because I do these things, does not mean I cannot slip into fornication, pride, any other sins do you understand sin is sin it's like human beings have created a hierarchy of sin in their mind oh smoking drinking sex um murder rape blah, 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 blah. listen all sin is abominable to god so whether it's your little white lie whether it's you've deceived someone whether it's you stole five pounds stole whatever listen 
it's sin. Do you understand? So don't be looking at a next man and saying, oh, you done this though, you done this, pointing the finger, or even judging someone in your heart. Guys, trust me, even me as I'm making this video, I'm pretty to myself, Bruh. I'm nowhere near where I need to be. Nowhere near. I'm so what's the word I'm looking for? Conflicted. In the sense that fam, I want to do certain things, my spirit's telling me otherwise, and sometimes I fall into the things that I know that I shouldn't be doing. And sometimes the things that I said that I've overcome. But guys, don't feel guilty, don't feel condemned when you sin. All guilt and condemnation is from Satan. When you make a mistake and you want to get closer to God, Satan's going to use it against you and he's going to say, but fam, can you see who you really are now? Can you see yourself? You fornicator, you liar, you this, you that. That guilt, that condemnation, it says, just makes you want to run from God's presence. Fam, when Adam and Eve committed the sin in the garden, fam, Adam had run from God, fam. He said, hey, God came out, they were look, he was looking for them after they sinned. Adam had run. He went to go and cover himself with leaf. He said, God said, where are you? He said, oh, but God, I sinned. I was scared. <laughs> Lord, I was ashamed. Hey, hey. I went to go and cover myself. I saw I was naked. And God came frustrated with them. Do you understand? But God came out to look for them in the first place. So don't feel condemned when you're making your mistakes, guys. This is so important. Whenever you make a mistake, mistake just come back and get go back to God. The Bible says the wicked and the righteous will both fall seven times. But the righteous will get up and come back to God. You, seven is a number for infinity in the Bible. We are all humans. We are all going to make mistakes. This is a long journey. This is a lifelong journey, bruv. This is not an overnight thing. Boom, you just click a thing. Recipe, bow, hocus pocus. Now I'm, hey, hey. Do you get, no. We're all going to make mistakes, fam. Bruv. You think your pastor don't make mistakes? He makes mistakes. He sins. But he gets back up every day. Does his quiet time. Repents. Calls on forgiveness. Calls on the blood of Jesus. Do you understand me? So guys, please don't ever feel like you're too sinful. Or you've made too many mistakes. Or that you're feeling mad guilty. Having some pity party. Fam, just get up. Confess from your heart. And move on and grow. Do you understand this was supposed to be a very quick, quick video just to help you guys. Just some advice, some tips that I even need to use for myself. Because, as I said, I'm nowhere near where I need to be. But, guys, I hope this was helpful. If you know that you're far from God, you want to have a relationship with Him, you want to accept Jesus into your heart, I'm going to leave a prayer here. And you can just say that prayer from your heart, and you will be saved. You will guarantee, you will confirm your place into heaven because the Bible says if you are, a man cannot be born, a man cannot see the kingdom of heaven without being born again. So that is even the first step, do you understand? That is even the first step. Say this prayer and roll out from there fam. Do your thing from there. But guys, I'm going to leave it there. Make sure you like. Make sure you comment. Make sure you subscribe. And make sure you try and get closer to God this year. Fam, trust me, he loves you. He died for you. He wants to be around you. Don't let the people on Twitter and people thinking you're weird and you're this and that put you off from doing what you know you want to do, fam. Hey, you think if I cared about our next man's opinion that I could be coming here talking about Jesus? I don't care, G. Fam, you're only just running up your gums on Twitter and that. You understand? Running up your gums on Insta and that, fam. Snapchat. Fam, I'm, I know my mistakes. You guys know your mistakes. We know our flaws. We know our imperfections. God sees all of that anyways. Do you get me? It's not for a next man to put you down and tell you you can't do this thing. You can do it, my G's. Rise up. God loves you.